OD, Jacob here. Today we're looking at Broadridge Financial Solutions in the professional services industry. 23.7 billion market cap on just under 27 billion enterprise value, founded in 1962 in New York. Growth is actually very impressive. Looks like due, mostly due to one year, but even outside of that, the lowest growth is 0.7% year over year, averaging, um, again, outside of that year, maybe 7-8% a year. Operating margin down a tad, gross margin down a tad, but all still very impressive. Operating margin hasn't been below 13, 12.9% the last 10 years. Return on invested capital, however, is declining the last three years. Still double digit, but not as high as the high teens that it was at the beginning in mid-2010s. Balance sheet shows $252 million cash on hand with $1.2 billion in short-term debt, $2.2 billion in long-term debt. Okay, so let's say about three billion in relation to their free cash flow is a good amount. Okay, so we are seeing maybe six years, just under six years of their five year average free cash flow in, in debt, both short term and long term. So they are going to have to focus on um, refinancing this $1.2 million since they do not have the cash on hand to pay it off, as well as the most recent year. They don't have as big of cash flow to pay that off, likely. And so that's that's my that's the first thing I'd look at is make sure that they're thinking about refinancing that debt or paying it off. And then once they do refinance it, they're going to have to start paying off their debt, which we do see the last three years. Looks like there was a large acquisition in 2021 to where they went into debt about two billion dollars. But outside of that, recently, at least they've been slowly dampening down that debt, which is awesome. But again, that does dampen what you can do with your other cash. So if you're spending 30% of your capital allocation for free cash flow to go towards debt reduction, you're left with only 70% of the original true free cash flow that you had. And so it's, it is it is necessary definitely at some times, but just remember it does limit you from reinvesting, buying back shares, whatever your case may be. And they also pay a dividend that is 1.6% and a 60 to 65% of their free cash flow. So it's a huge payout. So we're going to have to take that into consideration as well. So right now their capital allocation is really just debt and dividend. Not really ideal for me, but let's start making our assumptions here. They still have grown pretty well, so pretty impressive there. But revenue growth side, maybe 5%. Market average PE of 15, or roughly market average PE. Margins are pretty consistent, so I'll keep that consistent. And then I don't want to increase this dividend because it's already paying out so much. Their debt is also causing a lot. So really, let's just say they use 10 to 15% of their free cash flow to repurchase shares to offset soft base compensation. I think this is all they can do. I mean, even at the end of seven years, you're probably looking at 50% cash to debt to your dividend. You know, we said 10% to share purchases, maybe 30% to debt reduction. That leaves just 10%. Um, so it's not leaving a lot of money to reinvest, make acquisitions, but in a professional services type industry, that might be feasible. But even still, with all those assumptions, we're saying the company stock price needs to fall 71% before you get the return we're looking for here. So I do hope you enjoy the video and have a great rest of your day. I will be waiting on this company to get to a more attractive price for me. Thank you.